thanks for tuning in to Shannon and Veronica Know Everything. Today we're going to be going over ischemic strokes. So we have ischemic and hemorrhagic. Today we'll just be doing ischemic. And then note within ischemic strokes, there's throm um, thrombotic or embolic stroke, embolic stroke. So a thrombus is just a clot, whereas an embolus is a clot as moving from another location. So um, I think embolic strokes are probably most common. But when we look at strokes, know that there's two ways to look at it. You can kind of look at it from a vascular aspect or you can look at it kind of just what area of the cortex is affected. So I'm gonna go over kind of the areas of the cerebral cortex and then Veronica's gonna go over the vasculature. But pretty much know um, the, the vasculature is gonna come up, the um, anterior cerebral artery will kind of get the frontal lobe up here a little bit of these. And then the MCA, the middle cerebral artery will kind of get a couple different lobes. Whereas the PCA and the posterior cerebral artery will mostly just get that simple lobe. So just kind of ACA, MCA, and then PCA here so that kind of will tie what we're going over together a little bit. So to start off with, um, our frontal cerebral cortex is responsible for our decision making and more motor things. So you have the motor strip right here at the back of the frontal cortex and then within the parietal lobe you have that sensory strip. So when you have a stroke or a lesion or anything that sits in the frontal lobe you're going to have problem, problems with language and decision making that kind of thing and then also you'll get something called horizontal conjugate gate gaze. So that's in the frontal lobe, and basically that's where you turn your head and then your eyes follow. So you make a motor movement and then the eyes just take a minute to catch up. So if you kind of hear that in the vignette, think frontal lobe. Moving on to temporal lobe, this is going to be our auditory um, area. So if you have problems with hearing or anything like that, ringing ears, kind of start to think about a temporal lobe problem. Um, moving just superior to the parietal lobe. The parietal lobe has that sensory strip, like I mentioned, so it's responsible for sensory and then spatial coordination. So um, to move along to the deficits or strokes, we'll see if you have a left parietal deficit, you're going to have a calculi, um, so the inability to do math. So remember, people who are left-handed can't do math. And there's a lot of other ones, but that's just kind of an easy question, um, kind of keyword, a calculi, left parietal lesion. Whereas right parietal, um, kind of a key thing is left neglect. So basically you neglect the whole left side of your body, like you go to shave and you only shave like the right side of your face. So Veronica, you just remember, right side, you do everything on the right, like a little cap, and then you have left neglect, so half of you're on the left. And left neglect sounds nice, like right neglect doesn't sound nice, left neglect. So that's how we remember that it's a right parietal lesion. Um, so moving on from parietal to occipital, Occipital is the back of our brain. It's responsible for a lot of our vision. So if you have a stroke or lesion here, what you're going to see is homonymous hemianopsia. That ties into kind of the PCA um, vasculature to the occipital lobe. So what that is, homonymous, homo, same, same side versus hetero. Um, so both left or both right. And then hemiopsia, hemi, you can't see half of your vision field. So if you can't see half the left side or half the right side of things, like I couldn't see the right side of the room, um, that is going to be an occipital lesion, so make sure you don't confuse that with the horizontal conjugate gate in the frontal lobe. So those were the four lobes, and then I just wanted to touch briefly on the cerebellum. So the cerebellum is right here, it's a structure just right um, posterior to inferior to the cerebral cortex. Um, with cerebellum problems, we're going to get the cerebellum is responsible for a lot of our motor movements and balance, that kind of thing. So you'll have balance problems, and along with that, a lot of nausea and vomiting. So if you have a vignette about a patient who's having trouble balancing, walking, with the nausea, vomiting, really think cerebellar, cerebellum. And then they're gonna have a positive Romberg, so if you close their eyes and they have to stand, they can't do it because their motor balance is off. Positive RAM, rapid all chain movements because they just can't execute motor functions and then they won't be able to do a finger to nose test. Um, additionally, I didn't draw this in, but in the brainstem, we have the midbrain pons and medulla. We know the midbrain is cranial nerves three and four, pons is five, six, seven, eight, eight pons, and then medulla is nine, 10, 11, 12. So if there's any cranial nerve problems, like nerve palsies or anything like that, um, just kind of think that's gonna problem with the cranial nerves or going back to the brainstem if there's like a lot of issues. But you kind of have the autonomic problems too, along with the cranial nerves, it's gonna be a brainstem problem. So we're gonna switch over to the vasculature. So Shannon did a fantastic job of showing us the different uh, cortical aspects. Did I miss anything? The brain, and she did great. I don't think she missed anything that I can recall. Um, so now we're just going to kind of 
move down to just looking at the vasculature. So um, we have the anterior cerebral artery, um, the medial, medial cerebral artery, and the posterior cerebral artery. So these are going to be really great stress structures like vignettes and taking tests. So we're going to begin in with lunar. So these are small vessels um, that are having any ruptures or that are affected. So sometimes you think like the internal capsule, um, like that's somewhere you can find a lunar lesion. And so what you're going to find is that it's most commonly um, going to be a pure motor deficit. So for example, you could have like cranial deficits, sensory deficits, uh, motor deficits, and this is purely motor. So they can fill you, you know, they're conscious, they can speak, their cranial nerves are intact, but there is like absolutely no motor ability, so they cannot move. Um, so hemi uh, paresis and then hemiplasia. So now moving down to if the medial cerebral artery is affected, this is going to uh, show as far as like face and arms. Um, so for example, they won't be able to move. Is that correct? Their face and arms, um, or something within the face and the arms. So uh, just remember. Face and arms. arms are kind of like in the middle of your body, and then you need them to touch your face. So yeah, um, this is also that fixed gaze. Um, so Shani kind of portrayed it. Or sometimes it's called the doll eyes. So it's kind of where typically you move your head and your eyes follow. So you can see I'm just moving and my eyes follow me. Or with this, um, so if a patient's unconscious, you can open up their eyes and move their head back and forth, and you'll see that their eyes lag. So like, and then they go. So the anterior, this is going to affect your legs. Um, so it could be molar or it could be sensory. And then the posterior, this is going to be that vision. Um, so this is kind of what Shannon already talked about, where you know they have their eyes fixed to the side of the lesion, so either to the right or to the left, um, and they don't move to the other portion, and you can't even see that other portion. Well, the patient can. And then uh, basal or vertebral. Um, this is going to affect cerebellar dysfunction as well as the brainstem. So Shannon went over the brainstem, how you have uh, your pons, midrain, and medulla, and how there's certain cranial nerves affected there. Um, so if any cranial nerve dysfunction, you can kind of refer that back to uh, the brainstem. And then cerebellar is kind of like your balance and your gait. Um, so Shannon mentioned like any nausea, you know, you're having a really tight walking, then you're definitely going to think more of the basal or vertebral. Um, and yeah, so thanks for tuning in today.